Hi, my name is June, and these are the mountains where I live. More specifically, I live on the California side of the Sierra Nevada mountain range with my husband and my little dog. Welcome to my channel, where I endeavor to entertain and bring a smile to the faces of my viewers by my sewing shenanigans on the mountain. In this video, I'm going to make what is known as a hostess apron, otherwise known as a party apron, a dress apron, a cocktail apron, or a glamour apron. I'm making this one out of a seasonal winter fabric that I found recently at Joann's, but these were mainly impractical, fancy half aprons that were made out of organdy or um, a net fabric while this one is coated in like a glue type substance to make the glitter stick to it, normally the fabrics used to make hostess aprons were pretty much did nothing but absorb stains. So it was only worn after the meal was already ready and served. As you can see, I'm making a heart shaped patch pocket here. I do have a patch pocket tutorial where I talk about the shapes that you can make a patch pocket in which are pretty much limitless so I'll link that down that tutorial down below in the description for anybody that cares to watch it this pocket though isn't going to be very useful most of them on hostess aprons were just small and decorative and and really didn't serve a purpose these aprons were usually more decorative than anything. Um, they had ruffles. Sometimes they even matched the party dress. Just FYI, these were not the aprons that the women actually used to cook the meal. These were just nicer ones that they put on with a new fresh dress before their guests arrived. Back in the 1950s, aprons were still very practical, but they were starting to become prettier with decorative details and uh, some things that really had little or no use, like rickrack. When I record videos, I often plug into my music so that uh, copyrighted music isn't recorded in the audio. Well. My husband was trying not to scare me half to death when he got home from work. Hello! Hello! Something that every little dog owner knows is that little dogs don't do cold. I have been warming up Anakin's rice pack continually since the weather turned colder. PJs came off. That's my sweet boy. That's a good boy, Annie. When I'm sewing during winter, I dress either like a 1980s librarian or like a fangirl of that 1990s TV show called Gilmore Girls. During one of their autumny episodes, yeah. Just FYI, I never saw the show. I just happened to find wool sweaters cozy. When I go out, I often go retro just to make people smile. But when I'm at home, I wear sweats or wool sweaters or anything that's really comfortable. One of the commenters on my last video said I was living their 1950s dream. I beg to differ, I just like their clothing and fashion. And also I have to admit that I have a fair amount of kitchen envy. The stereotypical 1950s housewife generally had a nice kitchen. I'd love a kitchen like that, except in that god-awful pink color. And I'm not talking about the all-matching, everything-perfect, 
type thing that they advertised in magazines. That really wasn't for the everyday person. The kitchens that I saw in a lot of the photos of my grandparents, for instance, uh, did not all have matching appliances. But they were generally a more complete kitchen than we see these days. Now please pardon me as I lament how the weather is rarely dynamic and cool like this when I am ready to film a reveal. It really is quite disappointing that I can't control the weather. Yeah. I mean, it's true. I really don't need to be able to walk in a cool looking forest in my retro reveals, but it would be nice for my more cosplay ones. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice. I'm headed down the home stretch, the waistband, and the back ties are the last things that this apron needs. But as aprons go, it did, the hostess apron did serve its purpose, which was to impress guests. The 1950s housewife had to look like she slaved away in a kitchen all day in her best dress and prettiest apron to welcome her husband and guests to dinner. And women of the era would collect them kind of how I collect t-shirts now. As plain aprons were out of fashion, novelty prints were in style. Themes of travel, food, and the holidays reflected the trends of the era and the personality of the wearer, just like logo tees do these days. The 50s hostess apron especially um, became a novelty item, and it came in a new version every season, every holiday, most women had a full drawer of aprons that they had only worn a few times a year. For instruction purposes, I'm slowing down this clip so that you will see how long I'm pressing this red button. And no, that's not an eject button, nor one that will leave an oil slick for my enemies to slip and fall on their fannies. That, my dear friend, was the stitch length button on my sewing machine. I needed to do a machine basting stitch so that I could gather up the bobbin thread in back. It makes a nice little gather. I have another tutorial that I will link down in the description for machine basting for anybody that cares. As I am done, I am almost ready for the reveal, but first I have to bake some cookies because, well, a few reasons. I know that in my last video, most of you probably think I only use my mixer to make box cookies. Not so. As you can see in this quick baking montage to make cookies that I didn't actually use in my reveal, but at least they tasted good and my husband was happy. Well, I guess I did technically use one of them, but you have to stick around till the end to see where. I slowed down this clip because it was always my favorite part whenever my mom made cookies when I was a kid. But then who doesn't like adding the chocolate chips? Something she always managed to let one of us kids do. She didn't have a mixer, but she did have this big stainless steel bowl. And every time she got it out, we knew that cookies were in our future. That or potato salad both of which were epic, making this a great time to give a shout out to my mom who lives out of state. Hi mom, I miss you. Here's me thinking I'm being clever as I fill one of my tins with cookies. I have a set of these tins in the same design. The one you'll see in my reveal is actually empty, except for that one cookie I told you about. And here comes Retro June, modeling it for us now. And doesn't she make the perfect little 1950s housewife? Too bad this hostess apron is too impractical to wear for anything else. 
Well, if you ask me... Nobody asked you. Your suggestions are impractical, too. If you ask me, I think it's giving a lot of um, off-to-grandmother's house vibes. You think that, do you? I mean, with the basket, the cookies, and curls, and that print. I hate to burst your bubble, darling, but this is not the accurate type of apron for that. Not even close. Well, I think so. The views of a 1950s housewife were largely dismissed. So don't you even think about getting feisty. Wait, what? Yeah. No. What are you trying to do? Start a movement? This is a retro reveal, not... But give it a chance. Absolutely not. You look fine, and I'm not going to let you shake out those pin curls because we slept all night in rollers for them. Don't look at me like that. Oh, wait. What could possibly be so in... It's getting dark. Wait, what are you... And if I don't leave now, I won't make it to Grandma's. What's happening? So, I should get going. Wait, why can't I... What did you do? What is that? Oh, again with the sword. Well, yeah. I mean... It really helped last time. This is genuine wool. Genuine wool. My grandma's fanny. Wait, where are you going? You can't just... She's just walking away. <laughs>